NVIDIA's uh, AI Developers Conference is underway. CEO Jensen Wong uh, unveiling the next generation of AI chips to a packed house at the SAP Center in San Jose yesterday. Hopper is fantastic, but we need bigger GPUs. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to a very, very big GPU. <laughs> this is Hopper. Hopper changed the world. This is Blackwell. Told you. Uh, and it, 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 actually, the guy's name is David Harold Blackwell, uh, a, a mathematician. It, it wasn't uh, Richard Blackwell, the fashionista. But um, you can see it, it, it's a GPU that has all kinds of advantages in terms of, of performance and uh, energy usage. And already, anybody who's anybody is going to get this new line upgrade from Hopper. Um, Cisco, Dell, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, uh, Lenovo, Supermicro, all plan to deliver servers based on uh, the Blackwell lineup NVIDIA added. Our next guest is a tech investor who might actually understand this. Uh, he owns invest, uh, NVIDIA and joins us now. Paul Meeks is co-chief investment officer at Harvest Portfolio Management and finance professor uh, at the Citadel for Lehman. Uh, and I, I don't know what you are, Paul. You got an engineering degree or a ma uh, mathematics uh, degree. What, what, what can, you, can you make this easy for, uh, for every, well, for our viewers to understand? I mean, obviously, Becky and I are totally up to, to speed on this. But can you just uh, make it easier for people that may not be as, as uh, in the loop as us? What's going on? Though I'll tell you, Joe, before the commercial break, you went through the specs and you were sounding pretty nerdy. So I, I like what you got. And I'll tell you this. So it's a, a larger physical uh, GPU. It actually uses two die, which is a very sophisticated manufacturing technique from Taiwan Semiconductor. And you think about it, it's going to provide about 5x the performance of the latest H100 Hopper chip. And so essentially more and more horsepower they're making a bet that there's going to be a never-ending uh, desire for these chips as we continue to build out these large language models. And so we'll see what happens. You know, uh, in about three hours today, they're going to have a, a meeting for a Wall Street analysts like me, and we'll be able to hopefully get some guidance as to the financial impact. Because even though the specs here are pretty impressive, you know, they already have about 90% market share in the chips, the GPUs are building large language models. And so maybe this brings a greater profitability, but they essentially already own the pie. And so what they announced yesterday, I thought was pretty snappy. Then when, next we can get into the NIM software that they also announced. But what we need to hear is for them to keep their technology lead specifically over advanced micro devices. And at least last night or yesterday afternoon, I think they checked those boxes, which they needed to check because, of course, the stock is up fivefold since the introduction of ChatGPT a couple of years ago. Well, better margins or better profits on a stock that a lot of people say is not that expensive relative to other technology stocks. That that's pretty. That's not bad. The stock was off a little bit, but that that could just be, uh, that could just be, you know, the run up was 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 so significant. Right. Uh, what the, 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 you said, software. They're also uh, yeah talking about so the next stage. enterprise digital. There there is more than just the the Blackwell uh, that new technology that was uh, introduced, wasn't there? What else? That's right. So in tandem, they offered uh, software for inference. Now in the AI supply chain, you start with your large language model building. And that's what's going to uh, continue to probably happen for another year or so. And then you take all of that uh, great data that you've crunched and you try to create some patterns that actually can be used by folks. And so what they want to do is make sure since they already own the pie for large language model building, 
that they keep their lead in the next stage inference. So they announced NIM software, NIM, and what this will do is they are going to charge uh, about $4,500 per GPU per year as a license fee to better be able to use their chips in this uh, inference stage, which is the next stage of AI. Now, the price point is not going to drive revenue like the chips did. But the nice thing about the software licensing model is there are no manufacturing costs. It's 100 percent gross margin. So pound for pound, it'll be much more profitable. I mean, that's, but it's, that's it's a kind big of a deal, one, I thought, Paul. A, a one-two punch that was necessary. Yeah, I, I mean, the, just the idea that they're going to be so much more than just a chip maker, um, right. the idea that you could, uh, I guess, become more like a Microsoft or somebody with the, with the software aspects to that, that, that changes the equation, I guess, to some extent in the, the profitability of this company. Yeah, Becky, that's a great point. So what they're trying to do is become the AI ecosystem, kind of like uh, Apple so successfully did with the Walt Garden, right? You had to have the phone and the watch and the earbuds. So this is what NVIDIA is trying to do here. Build a wall garden ecosystem in AI that'll be durable for many years that doesn't just include uh, several iterations of the fastest GPUs, but also software and probably other products over time in that bundle. So they're trying to copy that Apple walled garden playbook. 